Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a quick one going over my current mastery setup. This is November of 2023 and the setup that I have is just kind of my generic day-to-day -day use. It works for Alliance War, Offense and Defense, for questing, just based on the champions that I enjoy using the most. And this also happens to be my Battlegrounds deck one. I just think it is just like generally very perfect for me. And my philosophy on a lot of masteries has shifted a little bit over time but I do think that this reflects what I think is the best setup for just generic usage. Uh, as we go through each tree, I am gonna talk a little bit about some of the masteries that I have unlocked, but I don't currently have because there are certainly times to use them. And I'm also gonna hit on Necropolis a little bit because when you're doing a Necropolis clear, I think you're gonna want a slightly different mastery setup as you go through that. So anyway, again, this is not like a massive guide on everything you know about masteries, everything you need to know. This is more just about my personal preference and giving some justification for why I have what I have in each of these three trees. So with that, let's get started with offense. There's nothing too much to talk about on the left side here. The main thing I would say is that in recent months, I've gone back to the full five out of five precision and cruelty. Now there is certainly a mathematical argument to have these one or both of them only at four out of five. That is because of diminishing returns. As in that final point, like how much crit rate is it actually giving you? Is it really gonna make a difference? But for me, what it boils down to is even just a tiny bit of crit rate, if it means that one of my special attacks gets a crit when it otherwise wouldn't, even if it's a mathematically small chance, it is enough of a chance that it's worth it for me. For so many of the champs that I have ranked up, critting on special attacks is one of the main ways that I do damage. And I think that applies to so many other champs in the game. So being able to maximize that chance is worth it to me. And and worth a little bit of the compromise that needed to happen to get that. So those are both five out of five. Talking about the despair tree, I've often said that despair mastery itself is one of the most powerful in the game. It essentially adds a line of text to the abilities of so many different champions, as long as they have some form of debuffs, which of course is like many science champions, but also anyone that has some kind of damage over time. Uh, any of those debuffs are gonna be reducing healing. When you max it out at seven, it is quite potent. It of course works with other stuff like Petrify and the Petrify Mastery itself to actually reverse healing. But I just think being able to add this ability especially when it comes to PVP content, uh, you know, anyone who's running willpower or certainly if there's some massive healing in the content itself, it is just such a powerful ability. It was something that I used to turn on and turn off depending on the champs I was using, but seeing how many champs have a lot of debuffs nowadays, I do think it's one of those ones you wanna have on at all times, especially if you're playing a lot of battlegrounds uh, because it does have some defensive uses as well. And certainly in Alliance War, it comes in handy as well. So those PVP PvP modes you really, really want to have to spare. Can't say enough good things about that one. Now, Deep Wounds is one of the ones, if I had more points to throw around, I would make this five out of five. It is very powerful, even though it only hits a few champions. Obviously your Nick Furies, your Black Cats, champs like that really benefit from it. Um, but you know, for me, again, it, it just kind of comes down to a compromise. I do think two out of five is a decent place to have it. You get an extra second on all the bleeds and you do get the benefit of that burst damage when you get close to the end of the fight as well. So if I had more points, I put them there. I just think that there are better places for my points currently. Um, if I ever am taking a really scary fight with a Nick Fury, I will of course put it at five out of five but on day-to-day -day use two out of five is doing great. Now talking about the recoil tree real quick, I do think that glass cannon is one of the worst masteries that you can spec into, particularly because it reduces your health of your defenders. And when that gets multiplied out with the modified health, I think it makes it even worse. So you do not really wanna be messing with that because the attack bonus that you get even at max three out of three really doesn't outweigh the health loss that you have. It's just not worth it in my opinion. So looking at glass cannon, it's basically a gateway to the recoil tree. and you know, those recoil masteries are very, very powerful. And there are certainly times that I turn them on and use them for arena grinding. Obviously it's the main use, but there are certain champions that just benefit so well from them and certain encounters, whether it's war or content where you do want them on. So for anybody looking to invest, I do highly recommend spending the units to get these unlocked or maybe using those summoner appreciation crystals to get those carb cores. It's a very, very good use um, just to have it. It is another tool 
in your arsenal. It does have lots of trade-offs, but I do really like these masteries. Recoil three out of three itself is a little underrated because it just makes special attacks hit super hard. And uh, yeah, you may want to consider just unlocking it and having it in your back pocket. Now, when it comes to Necropolis, I just want to talk about Courage real quick. I'm not a big fan of Courage because especially in Battlegrounds, you don't want to be dipping under 50% health anyway. And, you know, for the most part, like if you're playing well, you're not going to have to activate this. It does, of course, come in handy every once in a while. But specifically with Necropolis, there's probably going to be a point on the map where you're just using 40% revives, which means every time you revive, you're going to be under 50% and you're going to get the full benefit of 20% extra attack when using courage so I do highly recommend having it at three out of three when you're doing the necropolis because that much attack is gonna chunk through the health faster over time in my opinion and in situations like that where you're just using the lower revives I do highly recommend courage similarly assassin I don't really enjoy assassin on a day-to-day -day basis because of the way ability accuracy works I have a whole video on this but essentially there are lots of beneficial nodes to the player that will get turned off by ability accuracy or things like the classic example is things rock stacks you cannot dependably be adding the number of rock stacks when you have ability accuracy reduced which means getting to exactly 15 can be a little bit difficult and you can get thrown off i don't like that on day to day however when you have these massive health pools that we're going to have in necropolis i do think that getting through the last 18 percent faster may be worth at least one point in assassin if not all five <laughs> so it is a very powerful attack boost which can be covering like almost a million health potentially so i do think that it is going to definitely come in handy if you want to use it for necropolis i do find on a day-to-day -day basis especially with strikers now that once my opponent gets under 20 percent health i can usually do like combo striker special attack another combo and then they're dead so like having assassin doesn't really matter for that last 18 percent but in bigger health pools, it certainly will. So anyway, that's my take on offense. Let's take a look at defense. This one has probably changed the most for me over time. And essentially what we're looking at here is inequity being at three out of three. I think that's the main difference. It's something that I did primarily for Battlegrounds. Uh, but you know, there are just so many champs, just like I was talking about with Despair, that have those debuffs. And when the debuffs are applying to the opponent, you're essentially giving yourself more effective health by adding what is you know a passive weakness to them it is reducing their attack this comes in handy so often on offense and defense can't say enough about it i feel like this mastery has just made a complete renaissance among some of the top players in the game and i followed their advice and i am seeing it on a day-to-day -day basis making an impact on my deck the other one to talk about is stand your ground i used to have the points in perfect block but that one wasn't really working out for me that well because it's such a low chance and you know, I thought that it did increase my parry stun duration a little bit, but I kind of misunderstood how that interaction worked. So I don't recommend perfect block anymore, but I do recommend getting standard ground as high as possible. Uh, this is mostly because, uh, you know, defensively, it obviously has its uses. It can throw people off when they're using Tigra or if they're fighting your Mordo. But offensively, you know, I'd like to admit that I, uh, I, I wish I could say I don't get hit by heavy attacks, but like sometimes I'm just not quick enough and getting that resist at a pretty high percentage is pretty awesome so that's basically my defensive tree some other notable ones i would say are willpower three out of three is actually pretty powerful because of how much health you have even just like a fraction of a percent more healing per debuff is really going to add up and top you off a little bit faster um, so i do think that for some people that is a good use of masteries especially if you're swapping out the recoil tree it's nice to like permanently have that at three out of three so it's a little bit easier to switch it's just again talking about compromises for me the one point goes a very very long way being able to heal back to full if there's some kind of non-damaging debuff on me so really recommend having some willpower but i do think that one out of three is plenty at this moment and as you kind of look at the rest of the defense tree i think it's self-explanatory um i don't use resonate because of the way that also can interact with certain champions um but there is of course a time and a place 
ways to use resonate one out of three like if you're using void for example getting that extra debuff is really helpful um, if you ever need a weakness there used to be some nodes that required a weakness so i do recommend unlocking it it's just something that i don't use on a day-to-day -day basis and then last one i'll talk about is tech collar um, or collar tech i guess it's called i do not have this unlocked past one out of five but certainly there are certain champs whether it's vivision or punisher 2099 or even ghost who do very highly benefit from this it's just investing all those cores and five points in it is so expensive i'm not sure it's as worth it as something like mystic dispersion so now moving forward let's talk about the proficiencies we'll work from right uh to left actually so mystic dispersion is always five out of five for me this is obviously great for defense especially in this current battlegrounds meta but offensively it's like i can't imagine my mystics without it like i've run five out of five for so long it's just a staple i have so many ranked up mystics that this is one of those ones it's it's just a no-brainer for me now i will say for necropolis this is one of those ones that may end up disappearing and going into other points simply because I don't know which mystics if any I'm going to be using on all the paths I'm certainly sure there will be use for some mystics will I need MD I don't know sometimes those five points in a very specific matchup can go somewhere else and be very good but just you know if I'm not spending on swaps and I want to just have a generically good uh, setup it's always going to be five out of five for me highly believe in that now the other one you may be interested in is petrify three out of three I I do really like this because parry stun is something that you can do in almost any matchup and what it will do is reduce the combat power rate while they're stunned it just means they get fewer specials it means you can get to your special one sometimes before they can get to a special one i do find that having your uh, champs throw fewer specials is good and then this additionally can stack with stuff like despair to actually reverse healing even if you do not have petrify you can worry about like getting all these debuffs on them and then stunning and reduces the healing as well and i believe this also works for ability power rate because it's such an old mastery in the way it was coded it works for both ability and combat power rate so it's very very powerful i'm almost like never going to turn this off because i'm just used to that style of like how much power i'm giving them while they're stunned in like 99 percent of the matchups it's going to help you in one way or another in my opinion and i do think that if you have the three points it is totally worth having um the only scenario where it's not great is if like you need to be pushing them to a bar of power whether it's like a power sting champ or things rock stacks again bringing up thing or like you know um uh, th those old nodes where you had to like count your combos and bait specials and things like that so like there are times that petrify can kind of get in the way but like again 99 percent of the time i think it's a very powerful mastery now parry is always at three out of three dex is always at one out of three i don't think i need to explain why but like you should just believe me that that's the way you should go um stupefy is always at three out of three just to get that extra stun duration and then the final mastery we're going to talk about is five Five out of five limber now this is of course great for defense it's great for battlegrounds defense making it just a little bit more difficult for people to punish your champions especially if it's like a champ that can shrug like kingpin you don't have enough reaction time to see hey did the stun land like i do think that's very powerful it also has offensive uses because like a lot of the times if you get parried or if you get stunned by the opponent it's really nice to not have to worry about getting smacked after because you recover so quickly so so five out of five limber is definitely a standard for me but this is one of those places as with petrify where like if i need to put points somewhere else i may steal from here because it's a little bit of a luxury especially on offense and may not be totally necessary so when it comes to necropolis we're gonna see probably some points from proficiencies going into those offensive masteries that i was talking about and you know aside from that i think i've hit it all there's really not a lot of rocket science to this um I do think that stuff like salve is completely uh, useless now. I do think stuff like coagulate and suture are not very useful in today's game. It's just such a limited, limited use. I already talked a little bit about perfect block. I think that's not the best use of points uh, currently in this state of the game. And then when it comes to the offensive tree, you know, something like unfazed is mostly a defensive mastery and there's not going to be annoying evade in the necropolis. So I don't think you really need unfazed and then when it comes to these fury masteries like they are obviously really powerful when you use champs like Aegon or medusa or hyperion who get these furies if you 
want extended duration or extended enhancement. But again, it really depends on your roster. Um, I did use those back in the abyss when I had Aegon as my main clear, but like that's one of the only times that I've ever had them on. So really just look at the top of your roster and see if you need those fury enhancements. Um, last one I'll talk about is just, you know, greater vitality here. Um, there is an argument because some of the defensive masteries are so weak that if you don't want something like stand your ground or recovery, you could put points in here and it adds to the health of you on attack and defense. Could have some benefits in battlegrounds. There are some people that actually run this mastery. I would say of all the like very simple masteries, this is one of the ones that you may want to consider doing. But for me, I think the utility of something like stand your ground is just so powerful that I do want to have it at uh, the max rank here. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or if you have any insights on your own masteries, do leave a comment uh, and I'll try to do this maybe once a year, give you my mastery setup and give you a little bit of my philosophy on why I chose them. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.